So the world of nutrition, it can seem incredibly confusing, and it's something that I've had to personally study for many years in order to make sense of all of these seemingly conflicting statements that we see online from different experts. The truth is that nutrition science isn't this crazy thing that no one understands. It's more like a giant puzzle, and every study is a piece in this puzzle that when we look at the whole picture, we can make sense of everything, and then we actually know a lot, and we can make really good recommendations. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the five top things that I've learned as a nutritionist about nutrition to help you on your journey with making sense of things and creating a healthy relationship with your food. Number one, it might seem complicated, but it's not as complicated as it seems. If we're spending time on social media, we might see a lot of conflicting information. And when we don't understand nutrition science and we just see someone talking about something, maybe they're a doctor, maybe they're a health coach, and maybe they're citing a study, it can seem like they're very legitimate, very professional, and we wanna to listen to what they have to say. But the truth is that a lot of these people on social media are creating content that is going to rise up in the algorithm things that are controversial, things that are emotional, because that's gonna get us to like their content, spend more time on the platform, and make more money for Meta or TikTok or whatever. When we start to understand science a bit more, we learn about this thing called the hierarchy of evidence. There's many different levels of evidence in terms of the scientific process, and they all have kind of different contributions to the science as a whole. We have things like expert testimonials, which kind of rest right at the bottom, because just because one expert says something doesn't mean that it plays out and is applicable to everyone. Then we have other things like rat studies, mice studies, animal models. They can start to kind of give us conclusions about maybe this thing might also happen in humans, but again, we're not rats, we're not mice, and our bodies are very complicated and different. So just because something happens in a rat or mice study doesn't mean it's gonna happen in humans. And I see this so much online. You see a scary study about something like seed oil or soy, and you look into it and they're actually citing a study that was done on rats or mice. And I mean, this is very interesting, but does it play out in humans? And you can check out my video on soy for this as well. When we look at human outcome data, which is most important looking at actual humans, this doesn't play out and we see that they're actually very beneficial for our health. So if you don't understand these things, you can see how it's very easy to fall into this narrative that someone's creating. Again, often these people are trying to sell their own supplements, their own programs, their own books, or whatever it is. They're trying to make money by confusing you. And by understanding this hierarchy of evidence, we can start to make sense of things. So getting further up there, we've got things like randomized control trials and then systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And these are basically studies that look at hundreds or even thousands of studies. They pull all of that data together and they can look at them all and make much stronger conclusions. These are the sorts of things we want to be looking at when we're making evidence-based recommendations. Not one study over here. We want to look at this whole puzzle, not one piece. Because imagine you're looking at a puzzle and you see a tiny piece. You might be able to try and guess what the whole puzzle is a picture of, but you're going on very, very limited information. And this is not how we do science. So, the next thing. And I've fallen for this many times myself when I was younger. Focusing on the basics is essentially 99% of our health. It can be very tempting to want to follow these special diets, these special supplements, this hidden knowledge that they don't want you to know about. But the truth is a lot of these things are bullshit. Again, as I've talked about, a lot of these videos on social media are designed to get your attention, get you to buy in, get them likes, make them money. And it's not necessarily sexy and it's not necessarily going to go well in the algorithm me saying, eat more fruits and vegetables eat more whole foods. But these are the most important things. Eating a balanced whole food diet. Getting enough sleep at night. Managing our stress levels. Doing things to care for ourselves, to give back to ourselves and fill our cup. Spending time with friends and families and loved ones. Doing things that we enjoy, that give us purpose, that we're passionate about. All of these things are what come together to create the majority of our health. If we're taking supplements, or we're doing special protocols, this might be less than 1% of our total health. And while they totally have their place in different people's health journeys and can help us in the beginning to get on track and to get where we need to be, focusing on the basics consistently over time is what's gonna pay the most dividends, 
give you the best results and help you to live a long and healthy life. And I'm passionate about focusing on longevity here, living a long and healthy life where we can continue to do the things we love, connect with the people we love and share that with the world. Number three, and I know this is a crazy one, but different things work for different people. <gasps> no, surely not. Surely it's the same diet for everyone, right? And I mean, it can be tempting to say, this is the best thing for everyone. Everyone needs this supplement. Everyone needs to eat this food. Especially when I was younger, I wanted to think this way too. I wanted to be part of something. I wanted to change the world. But in truth, it's a lot more complicated than this. Lots of people come from very different backgrounds. We all have different genetics. We've all grown up in different environments, in different families, in different countries. We all have a different microbiome. And it's so important to understand, as humans, we are all different. And just because something works for one person doesn't mean it's gonna work for someone else. Imagine you're allergic to strawberries and everyone's telling you, strawberries are the healthiest food in the world. They're rich in polyphenols and other essential nutrients. They're great for our brain health and essential for our gut health. But for you personally, strawberries are the most unhealthy food in the world. You eat them and you get a rash and you feel terrible. So it's really important to understand what works for you. And you see this with different diets as well as I've talked about if you check out my video on the healthiest diet. Some people might do better on lower carb, higher fat. Some people might do better on higher carb, lower fat. There's a lot of individual variation, but we can make all of these diets in a healthy theme. So they're beneficial for our health. They're gonna help us to live a long and healthy life, but they also keep us satiated, give us the energy we need and work with our own individual physiology. And this is where it's really helpful to see a nutritionist who can help you to find out what works for you and give you tools and strategies to help you feel your best and live a long and healthy life. And this is the work that I do with my clients. And if you're wanting some support, please check out the link in my description where you can book a session with me. I would love to help you on your journey. Number four, the importance of eating for our microbiome. I remember when I first learned about gut health, my mind was completely blown because if we have maybe 30 trillion human cells in our body, we have over 40 trillion microbes in our gut. These are things like bacteria, certain fungi, viruses, they all come together and form our microbiome. And this has an enormous impact on our overall health because they also eat the food that we eat and they produce compounds that can either support our health or maybe actually reduce our health and increase our risk of certain things like cancer. And so eating for our microbiome is incredibly important when it comes to our health. We need to feed these community of beneficial microorganisms so they can be happy and help us to be healthy. And the thing here is essentially what we know is eating a diverse range of different fibers from whole foods is what is beneficial for our microbes. They digest these fibers and produce things like short chain fatty acids that can help to keep our gut healthy. They also go through our body through circulation and help improve our health in many other ways, supporting our brain health, our cardiovascular health, reducing our risk of different diseases. If we're eating many processed foods or processed meats, they can increase our risk of these pathogenic or unfriendly bacteria that produce compounds that it can increase our risk of things like colon cancer. So it's really important to build a healthy microbiome and look after this incredible garden inside of us and be a good host for these bacteria because we better be careful, there's actually more of them than there are of us. So are we really even human? Another thing that can be really helpful here is eating fermented foods because they introduce more of these beneficial bacteria into our gut. And again here, if you're struggling with gut health, this is a really common one. I've got a couple of videos on the topic to support you, but also working with a nutritionist or a dietitian, a health professional that understands this can be incredibly beneficial here. Again, I've got my link in the description if you need specific support. Number five, it's not just about the physical food that you eat. It's so incredibly important to look at our relationship with food, the psychology and mindset around the food that we eat. There's so much psychology that comes into play in our relationship with food. What sort of foods we eat? Are we afraid of certain foods? Based on different information that we've learned, our environment, what other people are doing around us, our habitual cues. This is a subject that I'm fascinated on. 
but essentially it's really important to create a healthy relationship with our food. We don't want to be going through life afraid of food, scared to go out to our friend's place for dinner because they've put seed oils in their cooking, or limiting or restricting ourselves when we really shouldn't be. And this is another one it's really important to get help with if you're struggling because it really is possible to create a healthy relationship, to be able to enjoy your food, to nourish your body and feel good along the way. And I just see this so much online. People creating videos that are creating fear around certain foods. And this is honestly disgusting because think about it like this. This here, this could be the least healthy food in the world, whatever that is and then here's poison. The least healthy food is still a billion, billion, billion times healthier than eating poison. Even eating the least healthy food in the world is not gonna kill you, well, at least not straight away. And I think honestly, following some of this advice is a lot more toxic and damaging to our health because it creates stress and anxiety than any of these foods that people are talking about may or may not be. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. The top things that I've learned as a nutritionist, I hope that my journey might be able to help you out a little bit on your journey. I know I would have loved to have this information when I was younger. Feel free to give the video a like and subscribe for more evidence-based nutrition content to help you eat in a healthy way, to live a long and healthy life and create a good relationship with your food. And if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the confusing things that are online, then check out this video where I look through some of the common claims online and give some more context and understanding about them. Stay healthy and I'll see you soon for another video.